So last week, I woke up ready to go to work, and I realized that I had a bit of a sore throat. And with this whole coronavirus pandemic going on, I just wanted to be on the safe side, so I decided to stay home. I called a doctor to see if they could clear me and tell me that I didn't have the coronavirus. You know what they told me? They told me, just stay home until we have tests available or until your symptoms go away. So I came up with my own way to figure out if I had the coronavirus or not. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to stay home. You're not going to have any contact with anybody else. But while you're staying home, you got to build yourself one of these. This is a super sweet Damascus steel knife that I just spent about a week putting together. You're going to be so obsessed with building this thing because it's so much fun that about a week to two weeks is going to go by. And by the time you finish making it, you're going to know if you have the coronavirus or not. And if you do not have the coronavirus, well then I suggest you go check out some of our other videos that will tell you some really cool ways to get out in the woods and enjoy hunting. Because guess what? There's no coronavirus in the woods. Do you want a chance to win both of these shirts for free? All you have to do is make sure that you're subscribed to our channel. And if you want to get more entries into this raffle, just click right here to get more info about the raffle. I bought the, uh, I guess they call it a billet. This is basically a ready to go blade um, that just needs handles. And, uh, and it's, it's Damascus steel. See how it has this like cool pattern going on on it? I don't know if you can see that okay. Um, so basically the way that this is made is uh, when they they like take two different types of steel I guess and they like fold them over each other when they hammer them down and it creates this really funky uh, pattern and I bought the, uh, the handle uh, plates I forget what they call them right now I think it's made out of some sort of horn and they're just really awesome knives I've always wanted one but it's super expensive and I figured it'd be a fun project to make it myself so today I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do it. So building a knife is actually really simple. As you can see, this has three holes in it, and uh, those holes are for the pins to hold the handles in place. Uh, so I need to, I, first I need a pin, and I have this little metal pipe laying around, which I'm gonna use as my pins. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sand all the paint off of this so it's bare metal, so that when I glue it in place, it's gonna hold on the best. All right, so taking the paint off of this, I got plenty of uh, length to cut three pins out of it. So we got 0.32 inches. So a lot of knives actually have two pins in them. This one's made to have three, but I think I'm actually gonna stick with two. I just feel like um, the pins are gonna sort of disrupt the flow of the, the design on the handles, and it's just a really cool pattern. So I actually don't want to drill too many holes in that. So I'm going to go with two holes and I'm going to drill 5 16 holes in this right now. All right, so it's a pretty snug fit. I can't really even push it all the way through. But I can get it somewhat through you can see all right so I've got the handle plates and um, I'm sanding them and what I did is I took a metal plate so I have a nice flat surface put some sandpaper on top of it and I'm just rubbing it on there just so that I get a nice flat uh, sanded surface I've been doing this for a little while so it's nice and sanded up on all sides and now we can move on to putting the holes into the handle plates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the, the blade on top of the handle piece thingy. And I apologize to those of you that are actually knife builders. I am not. I know these things have names. I 
and I'm not using the right ones and I don't care. So by all means drop a comment and let me know how much that annoys you. But it won't matter because in the end I'm going to have a knife that I'm going to be happy with. So there we go. So you can see on there got that generally traced out now one issue that I've, I've actually noticed is these are a little smaller than I'd like them to be and when I put this on here you'll notice that if I line this all up there's a part of the handle right over here that's not gonna cover all the metal so what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna cut this to round it off a little bit right here and I think that's gonna uh, make it look like it was deliberately done that way and it's gonna look pretty good hopefully all right so you can see back here I have my belt sander clamped down into my vise this is my cheap ass way of uh, making a bench grinder This is really just like a test fit. It's not even glued yet. But uh, as you can see, it fits, sort of. Um, and so I'm gonna pull it apart now. Um, and then I'm gonna glue it and uh, leave it overnight and then we can start shaping the handle. So well, I'm pretty excited with how it looks right now. Even though it's like very far from done. And what I've gone and done is I have sanded you can see I've roughed it up the sides that are going to be stuck to the knife. And I've also roughed up where the scales are going to stick onto the knife billet. So you may have noticed that one of the scales is really pretty on one side and the other one is not. And that's because I'm an idiot and I drilled the holes in the same spot on both of the scales, meaning that one of them is now backwards. Now, at first I thought I wasn't going to finish the knife, but it turns out that I could just finish it and uh, end up polishing it up. And, you know, one side would look a little bit different, but it would still be pretty cool looking. So here I am bonding them with, um, with JB Weld. And I used the 24 hour kind because I wanted a little bit of extra time to work with it uh, since it was going to be the first time that I was doing it. So I put the pins through on one side and they were actually, it, it was a really tight fit because of the way that I drilled the holes in the scales. And I learned a lesson here that really what I should do is uh, drill the holes into the scales through the billet instead of drilling the holes into the scales and then trying to fit the pins. So what I ended up having to do here, which you'll see me do right here, is I actually, right here, I'm pressing the pin through the other side uh, of the scale because it was such a tight fit that I couldn't actually push it through by hand. Now, uh, it actually worked out really well in the end because since it's such a tight fit, it means that it's just, uh, you know, it's just really strong and it's held together really well. Once the pins were pressed through, uh, I then used all these different clamps uh, at pretty much any spot that I could find on the scales that wasn't the, uh, the pins. So there it is. Just pulled it out of the vise. And it looks 
looks pretty solid. So, and I apologize for the sound of my dryer in the background, but this is real life and I'm not gonna wait until that thing's done. But uh, yeah, so anyway, now the next step is to start grinding away all the excess uh, scale material and start shaping this thing. I'm super excited to get going on it, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start right now. I'm actually gonna wrap a little bit of tape around the blade here just so that if I slip, I don't slice my finger off. So the first thing I started doing is basically just grinding down all of the scale material until uh, I hit the billet. And you could tell when you hit the billet because all the glue that was coming out between the billet and the scales uh, would suddenly be grinded off and you could see the billet very clearly. Uh, this process actually took a lot longer than I would have expected. It turns out that this black buffalo horn material is actually really tough. Uh, so you can tell I was going at it for quite a while and it was a pretty slow process um, But eventually I did manage to get all the way down to the billet on all sides I also had a slight issue that the billet was actually a little bit wider than the scale Which meant that right at the back of the handle there was actually a little knob of the billet that was sticking out and was not covered by the scale. So what I ended up doing there is just grinding away that piece of the billet until um, the billet was the same width as the scale and it actually worked out really well because now you can't even tell that there was ever a difference. Alright guys so so far what I've done with this knife is I have ground down uh, the shape, the profile of the billet into the handle as you can see and uh, but as you can see it's also really thick right now it's like two almost two fingers thick like one and a half so uh, it's obviously not gonna be very comfortable the way it is um, and so I still need to round off the edges of this knife so I want to round off the top edges here and obviously these bottom edges and also in the front here I want to round this and create a bit of a taper here because generally when I'm this is going to end up being sort of a skinning knife a general use knife when I'm skinning I generally tend to like to hold the blade or hold the knife a little closer to the blade so I like to have my thumb resting right up here and uh, even have my index finger over like this um, and that way you know you can peel skin and just get in there so I'll probably taper down the front end and in the back and I'll start by doing that on the machine um, and then eventually I'm going to switch to just sandpaper and do it by hand. So what I'm using here is actually a sandpaper tape that is used for fishing rod building that I had laying around because I do build fishing rods, but you could probably just use any strip of sandpaper. One thing I learned from this process is that uh, you really should get multiple uh, grits of sandpaper. I went straight from some pretty coarse grit to a thousand and uh, I really wish I had taken a step in between or maybe even two. I wish I had done like 400 grit and then uh, maybe 800 grit and then a thousand and then 3000 because as it turns out because this horn is so tough it really took a long time for me to sand out some of the scratches that that coarser grit had left behind.
once I was satisfied with uh, the sanding I had done to remove the scratches, it was time to polish it. And here I'm just using some Jewelers Red Rouge, um, and this actually did a really good job at shining up the scales. But I also have some high shine metal polish uh, rouge that I'm going to use uh, that I, I haven't done yet, but I'm probably going to end up doing that and making this just a little bit shinier. All right, there you have it guys. This is the knife. Super happy with how it came out. It fits really nicely in my hand. And like I said, I'm probably gonna sand and polish it just a little bit more to make it just a little bit shiny. I hope this was helpful for you guys. And if any of you guys decide to take on a similar project, make sure you send us a picture on our Instagram uh, so that we can see you know, what kind of knife you ended up building. That's all we've got for you guys today. If you wanna see some other DIY videos of projects that you can do around the house, while you're fighting off this coronavirus thing, you can click on some of these videos around here. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure that you do that now by clicking down here. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys next time.